Hello and welcome to Everything American. My name is Ted, and tonight we are going to be talking about Neil Gorsuch. Specifically, how qualified he is and why the left wants to tear him down. And why I think they're foolish for it. Alright, so let's dive right into it. Neil Gorsuch is, in case you don't know, uh, President Trump's nominee for the Supreme Court. Uh, well, he's the nominee for the Supreme Court. Uh, for su Supreme Court Justice. Well, with that said, uh, he is a, by all manner of speaking, a very uh, impartial judge, which in this day and age tends to be looked at as a conservative judge. Impartial meaning that he actually follows the Constitution and doesn't try to make it a living document or try to uh, somehow you know, implant social justice uh, ideology into it. He tries to interpret the uh, original document into today's society, but in the language that the original uh, members or for our forefathers would have uh, wanted in their scope, basically. I know that sounded real complicated, but basically what he does is he follows the Constitution as much as he possibly can, and then he goes off of precedent uh, up above and beyond that. Precedent is... Supreme Court cases that have already been handed down, or if there's no Supreme Court cases that have already been handed down, then it's appellate courts, etc., 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 and down the line we go. Now, he is incredibly qualified. He served 10-plus uh, years on the 10th Circuit uh, Appeals Court, which is the highest circuit court um, before you get to the Supreme Court. So, I mean, it's like playing in the minor leagues and getting ready for the major leagues. It's the next stop. <clears throat> um he has presided over 2,700 plus cases. Um, with, I could be mistaken on this, but I know it's in the 90s. I'm going to say 99% um, majority rulings, 97% uh, uh, standing, meaning that 97% of his cases have stood. Uh, the Supreme Court has only turned over 3% of his cases, which is an unbelievable track record. The guy's, the guy's a, a, a judge's judge, so to speak. Um, that kind of gets into why uh, it doesn't make any sense to me that the left is trying to sabotage his nomination. They're talking about um, filibustering, which in case you don't know, meaning uh, they will all vote against them, period. Uh, which leaves 52 Republicans voting for him, which he needs 60 to get through the Senate. Uh, 60 votes to get through the Senate. If all Democrats vote against him, then he doesn't reach it. He hits 52. The thing is, is because of the fact that the Republicans have a majority in the House or in the House and the Senate, they can then change the rules of the Senate, like the Democrats did, I think, in the Congress, to uh, it's called the nuclear option, which then um, allows them to uh, pass Gorsuch through or confirm him. Uh, with 50 plus the vice president, which the vice president obviously will, because this guy really deserves to sit on the Supreme Court. And that isn't just because I'm a conservative person. That's because I don't understand how conservative and follows the letter of the law have become synonymous and therefore, like, bad for liberals. I would think that everybody would want somebody to follow the letter of the law, okay? Um, but yet liberals try to say that he's for... Uh, corporations instead of a little guy. And I mean, I, I watched every day of the proceedings. There was uh, four days of the proceedings, three days with Neil Gorsuch. Well, actually, the opening day was opening statements from all the senators and him uh, and Neil Gorsuch. Then it's days two and three were questions, rounds of questions from both Republican and Democrat senators, senators to Neil Gorsuch to uh, determine whether or not, you know, he was, he was qualified or not, which they already knew beforehand. And then day four was... Uh, witnesses for and against uh, Neil Gorsuch, which it was funny because, uh, well, not funny, it was actually sad at how, how partisan our politics really have be, have gotten because every single witness for him were people that actually have worked with him before, so they have firsthand knowledge of the man and how he works. Every single witness against him was uh, organizations that were obviously liberal organizations that are just trying to um, promote an agenda which is, you know, Chuck Schumer's agenda and the liberal agenda 
which is tied to George Soros's agenda. But you guys do your own research on George Soros. That guy is evil incarnate. Um, okay, so this gets to why I think it's a bad idea. Here's the reason why I think it's a bad idea that this that, that the Democrats are blocking this justice. The reason why I say this is because honestly, it, Democrats are normally very very smart people. They normally don't make strategic errors. That's why they've infiltrated our education system, Hollywood, media, and, and you know all the big, powerful elites are mostly liberal. And that's why it was such a shock to get somebody like Trump in um, with all the corruption and BS in the government that is liberal control. I still fight every day to, uh, you know, with the liberal educators uh, around here and other places to try to get them to, you know, actually start teaching again instead of promoting an agenda. But we'll, we'll get to that some other time. Um, the reason why I think it's it's a poor tactical uh, decision on the on the Democrat senator's part, mainly Chuck Schumer's part, is this: uh, Neil Gorsuch isn't the one that you should be fighting. Now, what what I mean by that is this one was Judge's, Justice Scalia's seat. And for those of you who don't know, Justice Justice Scalia was an extreme conservative that died about a year ago. Uh, and there's many different conspiracy theories that circulate around that, but the facts of the matter are, he died, um, and he was a, an elderly man that died, and he was an extremely conservative judge, which means that he followed the letter of the law. Okay, so Neil Gorsuch would fill his seat, which would restore the Supreme Court to where it has been. The next person to, God forbid, die or retire is probably going to be Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who is an ultra-liberal judge who believes in basically making law and being an activist from the bench. Uh, I mean, Neil Gorsuch was very uh, nice to her, but I personally have a view on her of being, you know, a liberal nincompoop that just follows the, the agenda instead of actually following the law, like that judge in Hawaii that's blocking Trump's travel ban. Um, anyway, she's probably the next one up. Now, either to pass away just by math, I'm not being cruel and I'm not wishing for it, but either by math or the fact that she's just going to retire. That's the one, if I was the Democrats, that's the one I would be fighting because she's an ultra-liberal. So and that's the one that I would be saying, you know, we're going to filibuster. That's the one that I would be fighting against because you know the second one that Trump puts out is going to be somebody that he thinks, and he might be completely wrong on this, but it's somebody that he thinks is going to give him all the decisions that he wants. Neil Gorsuch is straight down the middle from everything that I've seen. Now, obviously, I haven't read all 2,700 of his decisions, but from everything that I've seen and all the people that have actually been around him, he really is straight down the center. He's either, you know, he's for the little guy, then he's for the company. It depends on the law. And honestly, the Congress writes the law, and he just enforces it. Whether he agrees with it or not, he just enforces it. And that's the way a judge should be. Uh, so if I was the Democrats, I'd be fighting the next one or the next one after that and the next one. Now, here's, here's how hollow the liberals really are. And this is all fact again. This is not, you guys can look this up. This is not opinion. When Chuck Schumer goes to the Senate majority, I think his name is Grassi, um, Chuck Grassi, and he says, well, if, if you promise not to filibuster the next one, uh, or if you promise not to go nuclear on the next one, that's what he said. It, Chuck Schumer went to Grassi and said, if you promise not to go nuclear on the next one, then we will sit there and let this one go through. That tells you right there, this has nothing to do with Neil Gorsuch. This is all about politics. That's all this is. So it just tells you how hollow and how partisan politics really have become. And it's, it's a shame with the Supreme Court that it even would come down to that. But politics have invaded everywhere, I guess. Um, now... Neil Gorsuch will get confirmed. There's no doubt about that. Whether it be through the nuclear option or not, he will get confirmed. Also, I want you guys to know that every single one of the Democratic senators right now that are threatening loudly to um, filibuster him all voted for him unanimously when he became a 10th Circuit judge 10 years ago. Not to mention, so did Barack Obama, so did Hillary Clinton, because they were senators back then. So just want you to keep that in mind. Um, with that said, uh, he will get confirmed no matter what. The second one going through, who knows, that could be easier, it could be harder. I really don't know, and I really don't care. Um, 
you know, it, it'll happen no matter what, if they have to go nuclear or not. I think that the bipartisan spirit needs to grip America again. I think that the Democrats and the Republicans have to learn how to get along because we are their bosses. They are not ours. And everybody needs to understand that. America was built on the fact that the people had the power. Well, it's time that we took our power back. And I don't mean violently. I mean, it's time that our voices get heard again. Our voices were heard on November 8th when we elected the outsider. And I'll have more videos upcoming on him with uh, the health bill and everything else. But as of right now, I just want to leave you with this. Neil Gorsuch will get confirmed. From everything that I can see, he's going to be an amazing judge. Somebody that follows the Constitution. Somebody who follows the way America was founded. And that's what we need. More people like that. Um, the partisan politics look like they're going to continue, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully that changes. Uh, yeah, so the next Supreme Court Justice, you're hearing it here, is going to be Neil Gorsuch. I think we have to wait until Monday because the Democrats uh, enforced a one-week waiting period, which that's just, again, playing partisan politic baseball. Um, but in any case, uh, Monday, I think he'll uh, go up for a vote. And if he does get filibustered, then the Republicans will move the nuclear option, and it'll take a little bit longer. But within the next couple of months, Neil Gorsuch will be on the Supreme Court, and we'll start seeing decisions handed down again. Whether they go for us or against us, folks, I truly believe they will be, according to the letter of the law, based on Neil Gorsuch's record. So I think it's a good day for America. Uh, it's a small win in Trump's column. I think it's a big win for Neil Gorsuch, and I think it's a big win for the Supreme Court and its integrity. Uh, until next time, guys, this is Everything American. Please like, follow, subscribe, tell your friends. We're growing, but we're growing slow. It's okay. Um, big shout out to Outlaw Morgan. I'm glad you're okay, buddy. I don't think you'll ever see this video, but if you do, I'm glad you're all right. And uh, congratulations on cleaning up your act. Um, and I hope you live many more years to come, buddy. We need more people like you. All right. Till next time. Take it easy, guys.